What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Career Mode. This is episode number 36. We start today's episode off on the back of our late winner against Everton. Three wins in our last four in the Premier League now. Trying to get back on track after a tough start to the calendar year with Brentford at home at the City Ground. Right now, continue to compete for a top four place. There is obviously a very outside shot of being in a title race. But I'm not really paying much attention right now. All I'm thinking about is staying in a European space, which at the moment does seem very, very likely indeed. And trying to be a top four team for next season's Champions League. Anyway, first game was indeed Thomas Frank's B. He's coming to take someone at the city ground and what a season he's had. If we are going to be in the top four, this guy needs to stay healthy. 21 goals in 26 games. Top scorer in the Premier League going for that golden boot. Gives us the lead in a very, very tough game. This is one of those games where like there weren't that many chances in it. It was a really, really difficult game for both teams to break down defenses. Brentford were pushing, huffing, puffing, looking for that late leveler. Great save by Henderson there, it's still up by a goal, but late on, Shaparenko finds Kane Lewis Potter in from Hull City, who gives the Bees the leveller in stoppage time. We talk about it often, man, but late goals in FIFA are so, so common. I don't notice them as much as I used to, I will be honest here. I've talked about them before, I feel like they have been toned down a little bit, but since EA added in the late goal celebrations... It seemed like every other game there was like a stoppage time leveller, winner or dagger. I don't notice as much nowadays, but they are still quite common. Lewis Potter the leveller in stoppage time, probably deserved as well, if I'm being totally honest. So 1-1 the final score and disappoints to slip up there and throw away two points right to death. Still for the draw, the draw for the Europa League last 16, where Forrest have got... Now, this is an interesting one. So, you see the draw there. There's some crackers as well. Milan versus Villarreal would be an amazing title to watch. But, Club Bruges, they were knocked out in third place in their Champions League group. Made it through the preliminary round and now into the last 16 as well. Club Bruges, obviously this season, have done absolutely tremendously in the Champions League. I don't think many people gave them much of a chance, but they qualify for the knockout stage with games to spare in the Champions League. Obviously, Simon Mignolet, who spent so many years at Liverpool, now between the sticks of the Belgian Pro League side, so they... They are a really good team, and they are definitely a team that could give us a lot of problems as well. Now, obviously, we might have avoided like a, a European giant, like an AC Milan or an Inter Milan, for example, but that is one of the tougher teams we could have faced there in that Europa League last 16 side. And I will be totally honest here, I'm pretty nervous heading to that game there because we've already gone out early in the FA Cup to Norwich City in the third round, so we failed that objective. The board of our streets to quarterfinals of the Europa League. I've got to say, I'm pretty nervous heading into that game there against a side who right now are performing above expectations. So, for the second game of today's episode, first one of March, Manchester United at the City Ground. Massive, massive game here again right now, desperately trying to get a top four place for next season's Champions League. Taking on the Red Devils, going for the title themselves. Well, started the game off at frenetic pace, put the sword to the Red Devils early, said this is what we're made of here, and 33 minutes in, won ourselves a penalty. Tony, taken down by the hair, definite spot kick, and I mean, <laughs> I scored one at Selhurst Park with the shocker. This one at the City Ground, and I'll be totally honest here, I really like this new penalty system. Oh, belter. Absolute belter. Bottom corner from the shocker. And I've now scored two into this season for 12 yards. I didn't like the old penalty system. I really didn't. I felt as though, like, it was just too... The radius, when you when you held down the, the circle button or, or the shoot button, if you will, if you're on Xbox or, or, or PC, um, I felt as though, like, the the radius for where the ball was going to go was just way too high. You know, even with players that have a pretty decent penalty stat. I mean, Tony's penalty stat, to be fair, 
is 89, so it would be higher regardless. But I, f I think sometimes, like, the, the, the radius for even, like, average penalty takers, because don't forget, average should be around 60 to 70. Even for those sort of players, it was, like, really, really big. Like, you hold down a circle button for, like, a, a you know, a sort of, like, an averagely powered shot. And the radius went to, like, two-thirds of the side of the goal. I felt like it was way too big of a radius. So sometimes you'd be aiming for the corner... And because of how much the radius would expand, it would go mostly towards the centre. I felt the radius was way too big and it really penalised you unless you had an unbelievable penalty taker close to or above 90 for the stat. So I have to give EA props to that. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of their new free kick and corner system. I must admit where you can obviously use the right stick to choose whether the player's going to chip the ball or go for a low driven or a knuckle ball type a shot uh, from a direct free kick. I, you know, I, I, I'm not too keen on that, I'll be honest here. Maybe because I've just never been that good at free kicks. Well, I used to be deadly back in like few 11, few 12, but that was a long time ago. But um, for penalties, I think the system they've got now is much, much better. Oh, so you remember the penalty we took against Sheffield United uh, last season? I mean, less said about that, the better. I didn't know what I was doing, but I think now it's a lot more, you know, I guess, I guess simpler. And, uh, and more realistic as well, because previously, penalties were way too hard to score, man. And I'm, I'm not just saying that because I was bad at them, but I just felt as though with a radius and how big it got. I mean, uh, you know, let's be honest here, a player with above average penalties shouldn't be hitting the ball centrally when you're trying to get it in the corner with them, you know? Anyway, won the game by two goals to one. Tony with the brace. I love the counter-attack for our second goal as well. Fred leading it, offloading to Ivan, who wrapped the game up whilst the Red Devils did ruin our clean sheet and injure Scott McKenna in the process. Down with a broken toe. He's done for the season now. We don't really use Scott the block much nowadays. We did still hold on for a massive win and a massive scout there. And it was the perfect confidence heading into our third game today. Mentioned it earlier. Club Bruges away in Belgium. What a season they've had in real life in the Champions League. Give them some credits. Already qualifying for the knockout stages of the Champions League. Taking them on in Belgium. I was a little bit worried heading into this game here, but I couldn't have asked for a better start. Yep, took the lead early, and then Taiwo made it 2-0, and 27 minutes in. Well, I praised him a moment ago there. Simon Mignolet has been brilliant for Club Bruges, or so what I've seen from Reddit soccer and Belgian football fans, but... Oh, he should have saved that one. Goalkeepers are so bad at times this year, aren't they? Yeah, straight down the middle and somehow it was like the Bravka against Norwich that we saw a couple of episodes ago. Somehow failed to get gloves on the ball and Brennan Johnson makes it free. We're dominating in the first half. Absolutely in control at the break, leading by three. I, I did kind of ease off a little bit and I mentioned this, you know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes you can pass the ball around and just conserve energy. You know, kill the game off. I talk about it a lot. Kill the game off. But sometimes it does come back to bite you in the backside, especially when a team's playing a high press like Club Bruges were. In the second half, they got themselves a goal back through Yaramchuk to make it 3-1. But... I'm not too concerned about that. Had I really wanted to, I think I could have scored more goals in that game and probably could have ended the tie in the first leg. But Yaramchuk did give Club Bruges a chance going back into the second leg. But they need to score at least two goals at the city ground. Not many teams have done that to us this season. And after this happened 16 minutes in, I knew the game. And the tie was over. Yep, Badgie dives in, two-footed from behind. God knows what he's doing there. And I've mentioned before, I am glad that the AI are now slide tackling because they never used to do that, being a little bit reckless at times, because they never used to lose their discipline. But sometimes it's a little bit odd. Like, I talk about situation-specific moments in gameplay, and, and that just is a bit weird. Like, why would he do that? It's 3-1 over the course of two legs. We're quarter of an hour into the second leg. Club Bruges are trailing by two on aggregate. They, they need to get back in the tie, and, and you just fly in when the ball is inside your opponent's half. 15 minutes into the game. Why would you do that? It made absolutely no sense. But anyway, won the game by a goal to nil, and that would do it. We are through to the quarterfinals. I was a little bit nervous heading into the tie, but after that amazing electrifying start in Belgium, that saw us through. 4-1 over two legs, three wins in a row in all competitions, and into the Europa League quarterfinals. I would love to get to our first ever final in this say. We have a chance in Europe and in the last day, Nottingham Forest will be taking on... Oh, I missed the theme song when I used to do the draws. I wish you could still do that. <laughs> 
Porto in the last day. Yeah, the Portuguese side, uh, Atalanta versus Villarreal, Inter versus Valencia, and Arsenal versus Marseille. I'll be totally honest here, I did not want Inter or Villarreal. But Porto, that'll be a tough one there, taking on the Portuguese side. But again, like Club Bruges... I think we can take them out. I think we can take them out. The first leg is going to be at the city ground, the second at the Dragao. But I think we can take them out. I definitely do. I would say, just like Club Brews, probably even in terms of ability. But I think we can take them out. Stay in good form, stay healthy. No reason why we can't. Final game of today's episode West Ham away in London. Aiming to stay in the top four and the perfect start to the game, just like we had in Belgium a week and a half ago. Ten minutes into the game, Curtis Jones bags his fourth in the Premier League this season and opens the scoring. 1 0 Nottingham Forest and right for the break, trying to double our lead. Brennan down the left hand side, trying to get round Delaney, rolls it through to Rodri Brown. Brown rolls it through to Tony, beats Stefan Savage and drills it in to make it to 43 minutes in, West Ham nil, Forest 2. So soon ago, starting the calendar year off, we had a terrible run of form. One win in five, dumped out of both domestic cuts, but now what a turnaround from Nottingham Forest. Four wins on the trot in all competitions. Seven wins in nine in all competitions. Into the quarterfinals of the Europa League. But crucially, right now in the Premier League, we remain in the top four in fourth place with ten games to go. We have a four-point gap on Liverpool in fifth. And we've also got two games in hand and a far superior goal difference. Can't believe I'm saying this, but if we don't make top four now... I'll absolutely bottle it. Please, no. But that will end today's episode of Korea World, guys. Massive thank you for watching. Really hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, then please do drop a like. Most of you all have a fantastic day. And I'll see you for the next episode with the Europa League quarterfinal. Both legs against Porto very soon.